What is happening everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today we're taking a look at some interesting knives. We're going to kick this one off with the Remet Rhino. Now there are a couple different variations of this knife out on the market right now. They have some liner lock D2 versions, but in this case we're talking about the button lock version. But what makes this a interesting knife is that instead of your standard plunge lock, this is a liner lock that is disengaged by a button. So a cool take on a button lock. Now, they are not the first company to do something just like this, uh, but they are the first company to do something like this at this price point. Uh, you can typically get these for between... 55 and 65 dollars and not only are you getting a cool unique locking mechanism but you're getting 14c28n on the blade steel a nice usable drop point blade you have a little cutout that's not all the way through but it is on both sides and you have dull thumb studs plus a front flipper for deployment and they have this dialed in very well micarta for the handle material anodized aluminum pivot collars you have a deep carry clip here it will not be reversible we have a micarta backspacer internal milling definitely a unique take on a button lock and it comes in at an extremely affordable price tag opposed to some of the other knives that are doing that very thing Remet is definitely stepping up their game. Now, this next one is not necessarily interesting for its lock mechanism or anything like that, but what we are talking about is my first experience with Altum. This is the Kubi KU322 D2 steel, nice drop point blade, fuller into a cutout, plus a rear flipper tab for deployment. Kubi does a great job on their line of knives that they do production wise they do great job a great job on their oem projects we have a lot of internal milling in there for weight relief and you can actually see that through the altum scales blacked out hardware reversible deep carry clip great access to the liner but that altum g10 is what makes this a very interesting knife this is my first experience like i said and i was on the fence about it originally and I would say that I'm still on the fence. I don't know how I feel about this color and this material, but I can say I'm a little bit leaning more towards, I see the value in it, that it's high quality. Altum is very durable stuff. It's a unique look. It's a different look than your standard G10. Uh, it has the ability to have some different things done to it, I believe, you know, as far as the texture that's done. Uh, it's an interesting handle material for sure. Uh, they have darker, lighter. I think I prefer the lighter, like you see here. The darker stuff, I'm not so sure about. Uh, I'll have to get some different Altum in to really get a better idea of if I actually like it or not. But on this particular model, I find it to be pretty decent. And the texturing that's done on here is very, very nice. Locks you in, lots of grip on this guy. Uh, so I, I definitely enjoy that. And I don't mind this Altum at all. So Kubi KU322, there's a ton of flavors. The Altum is, as far as I know, the newest one of the bunch. Next up, we're giving some play time to the CRKT Provoke. Now, I believe this is coming in D2 steel. This is a karambit style knife that is locked out by this. It's almost a frame lock, if you will. Uh, it's part of the frame and it is the lock, but it's definitely a different take on something like that. It locks in behind the tang of this gear here. And these gears are what allow this to open and close. You have this nice big ring here. It is an aluminum body and you might be saying, well, why doesn't it have a pocket clip? Well, it actually does. It is recessed within this liner. You push this tab here and that will poke 
your pocket clip out so you can slide it into your pocket or your bag or pouch or whatever it might be. And in order to open this guy up, you saw me screw it up earlier, but if you have it in your hand, you can flick that guy out and you are ready to defend your Slurpee or your Tasty Cake. Uh, I think this is an awesome and unique design, a take, a, a different take on a karamba and you know, I like different, I like unique things, and this is definitely an interesting take on a karambit, and I'm going to eventually here be designating a karambit, probably this one, to see how it does on day-to-day -day type tasks as an EDC knife, not only a defensive knife or a tactical knife, which is what the karambits are used for nowadays, or that's the you know ideals that are placed on karambits. But this kind of blade has been around forever, and it was mainly a gardening blade or an out in the field type of blade. But because of how low this is, uh, the, the how low the tip is, it's going to be awesome for certain things. Getting in behind something that you need to cut. Uh, opening things up for sure and the way this is angled you kind of have this slope to it that should have the ability to keep the material within the cutting part of the the blade and make things like longer cuts a lot easier uh, but that's couple of things I want to test out. Now the ergonomics are going to be the most questionable thing on this uh, as far as how you use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it, it's definitely not going to make up for a heavy-duty user. You know, you're not going to want to replace something like that with this. But as far as day-to-day -day tasks go and that sort of thing, I'm definitely interested to find out how these will do. The CRKT Provoke, definitely an interesting take on a Karambit. Next one up, we have No Stranger, the Civivi Vision FG. We have Nitro V for the steel, nice little modified sheep's foot blade, dull thumb studs for deployment, my car to handles. I did throw a titanium pocket clip on here, but there's usually a recessed rollover clip here, and it would be reversible if you wanted it to. The interesting and unique thing about this knife, like I said, is this knife is no stranger, but if you are newer, then you might not have an idea about this knife. This is a knife that's had a lot of praise over the last six months or nine months or so, however long it's been out. But this won a lot of people's budget knife of the year. It uh, won my, or no, did it win mine? Yeah, it won mine by just the slightest of margins over the Sokoki from Savivi as well. And uh, the super lock here is a very interesting lock guys it's a very strong lock and because of the way it's designed this is a fun fidgety satisfying lock as well you can kind of kick this thing around however you please and once you get used to this tab here whether it's a shark lock like demco does or this super lock it does take some getting used to uh you know i've seen some people say their finger hurts from it or whatever it's something that you got to get used to and eventually you know you'll pick this up and it'll be just like a liner lock for you or a button lock but it does take time to break in the tip of your uh, finger there for these types of locks that are like this I would have liked to have seen this maybe done just slightly different. I don't think it needed this like looping that we see here. I think this should have been just more straight and then straight down and a little bit finer jimping. And I think that would have been a possible cure for some of the discomfort that some people might have. But uh, once you toughen up your pointer finger and you use this knife, open and close it a bunch, uh, you'll get used to it. I love this area here. It allows you to choke up right behind that edge. It allows you to put your middle finger there so you can get right up on that tip. This is a great design with a very, very interesting lock mechanism. 
Now, next up, I'm going to just use this knife as an example. But in general, we're talking about the Kaiser Clutch Lock. It is a ultra, ultra uh, interesting lock mechanism. And it's not because it's a crossbar lock. It's because of what they were able to innovate out of Benchmade's access lock. If you are not familiar with Kaiser's Clutch Lock, their crossbar lock here, it is an actual adjustable crossbar lock meaning there are three different levels in here light medium and strong or you know weak medium and strong however you want to label that but there's three different settings in here that you can move the springs to to make this stronger deploying or a little bit weaker deploying typically i like mine a lot stronger they come on the medium setting and i will move this up to the strongest and this is really really good right where it sits uh so if it gets bumped up just a smidge more this is going to be an outstanding outstanding crossbar lock just like the escort just like the drop bear uh they're doing a phenomenal phenomenal job over there at kaiser on these uh, clutch locks on these crossbar locks they are pleasing and satisfying to open and of course the disengagement is just easy as pie smooth as butter satin 154 on this modified sheep's foot blade dual thumb studs and a cutout for deployment kaiser's beautiful micarta deep carry reversible clip open construction <clears throat> on this guy and we have lots of internal milling in there for weight relief this is awesome because the drop bear and the escort are both fantastic two of my favorite all-time kaisers but they are both drop point style of blades and now we have this sheep's foot-esque style of blade here in the kaiser task now they did do the sheepdog and there might even be another one i'm not thinking of uh but as far as i know if memory serves right this is the first crossbar lock in this style of blade shape right here and this is a great utilitarian blade shape solid lock up on this guy tested it it's been very very reliable no issues whatsoever there's no side to side play there's no up and down play kaiser just keeps on refining and they keep on making them better let me know what some of your favorite interesting knives are doesn't matter what it is or why it's interesting whether it's a steel choice a blade shape a handle material a lock mechanism let me know down in the comments what are some knives that you would like to see in the next video just like this one when we do some more interesting knives i love hearing from you guys comments really help the video get circulated hit the, hitting the thumbs up button that also really helps out the videos guys so if you're still watching hit that thumbs up button Leave a little comment down below. And if you're new here and you're still here, but you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below the video. I would love to have you here. Otherwise, guys, I'll throw up a couple new videos. Go check one of them out. That also really helps. And I will catch you on the next one.